icing on the cake, it's Mel Gedroich. And their team captain, John Richardson. And facing them tonight, acting tough, it's Stephen Graham. Top cat, it's Catherine Ryan. And their team captain, Sean Rock. Now, welcome your host, Jimmy. Welcome to 8 out of 10 Cats, a show all about opinion polls, surveys and statistics. Did you know, for example, over 1.6 million Britons still live at home with their parents? And we call those people children. <laughs> it takes giraffes up to an hour to have sex, but most of that is necking. <laughs> and 65% of people think Britain is a great place to live. And that's a survey of people hanging on to the undercarriage of the Eurostar. <laughs> Right, let's get started. What are you talking about? That's the name of our first round. It's our panellist's job to get to the British public's top five most talked about stories from the last year. Um, Sean, Stephen, Catherine, what do you think the nation have been talking about over the last year? What's, what's the most important thing? The Olympics. Yes. Perhaps the Olympics. The Olympics. The... It's pretty mm -hmm. huge. It's, it was a very successful Olympics, but for me, almost, it was too successful. <laughs> Go, on, Go on, no, tell me. Yeah. I've, I've got some theory now because for Bradley Wiggins, he also won the Tour de France. Andy Murray's finally won something. Oh. Yeah. You know, it, it's like we're too good at sport. We've <laughs> <laughs> got nothing to moan about, yeah. Well, it's just not, you know, not comfortable with that level of success and <laughs> sense of pride and, uh, and, and celebration. It just doesn't... I don't like it. <laughs> it was quite surprising, wasn't it, when the, when the old opening ceremony started, that it was actually quite good. <laughs> that opening procession at the Olympics, because they do it in alphabetical order, goes Iraq, <laughs> Iran, Ireland, Israel. That is a tough gig for the Irish. <laughs> <in> the <team>. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder they've developed a sense of humour in Ireland. That is a tough tunnel, that, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> just calm down a minute and just, <laughs> the floor, just look straight ahead and not talk for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you saw the... Uh, obviously, they did the, uh, the relay with the torch before it all kicked off. And then they rang bells. Did you see this? They rang bells all around the country to sort of mm -hmm. mark the start of it. And Jeremy Hunt kicked it off. Here he is. Can we get everything on the Yes, sure. Oh! Here oh, <laughs> 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 we are. We did a terrible moment there. Oh, no. Health and safety. Are you OK? How many men can genuinely get to say they've said to a woman, could you pass me my bell end? It's just on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> well, did, did you watch the Olympics? Did you? I watched some of it. I was away on holiday, so... I think a lot of people did go away. A lot of people left London, got out of it, cos it was... Like, beforehand, everyone was so negative, everyone thought this was going to be a disaster, and then it yeah. turned out it was fine. My wife's still crying. About it. <laughs> From the Olympics, she's not stopped crying yet. <laughs> I'm hoping it will stop at some point. <laughs> it was the Olympics, it was the, the levels of yeah. emotion, yeah. Oh, Twice I... I had to fill her up with water. <laughs> <laughs> Just dehydrated there, um, you know. <laughs> you know what I find, I find I've, it has to be said, uh, and I don't like saying it because everyone likes me, he's a really nice bloke, but the Mobot is shit, isn't it? I... <laughs> really embarrassing. It's rubbish. That, the Usain Bolt thing is brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Super cool. That is just rubbish. Oh, let's, let's have a look. Let's have a look. This is, this is Mo. It's rubbish. Uh -uh. It's like a crap someone who doesn't know how to do a teapot. It looks it's like... <laughs> it looks this like is a... embarrassing. Well, how like is that? This... Like, those are the balls, and then he's the big shaft. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, big balls. Big balls. Let's have a look and see if the Olympics is up there. Of oh, course. Of course. The most talked about thing. Yes, London hosted the Olympics in 2012. The Olympics may be over, but we'll never forget the volunteers and all the hard work they did for free. Not with the way they keep fucking going on about it. <laughs> John, what do you think the nation should be talking about over the last year? Well, who could forget the wonderful weekend when the economy contracted by £6 billion? Pounds? Uh, or the Diamond Jubilee, as it was called. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had a good look at an old woman. She didn't smile once. <laughs> This is what you had to be careful with, you I know, did. because you started talking to people reasonably and saying, 
Have you all seen we shit on the TV and like what sort of idiot goes to wash a flotilla? And they sort of go, we were there actually. <laughs> <laughs> we got there. We, we got there two days earlier. We camped out. <laughs> and you have to backtrack and go. Well, yes, I'm no, you did. I did for everybody. Did you, did you I enjoy know. it? Because I tell you who didn't really get into it, I tell you who was about as big a fan as John is, it was Eamon Holmes. Have a look at his coverage of the flotilla. You see, the thing is, we could, we could give you all the false bonhomie, we could tell you the truth that you're looking to head out today. Truthfully, you're going to have to be dedicated to be here today. I mean, it's not just wet today, it's not just cold, it is abysmally wet and cold. Do you know, all these people are so very, very happy, it is unbelievable. I just wish a few of these boats would now put the foot down, like, come on, very nice, but let's just get a bit of speed up here. It is cold, it is wet, it is windy, it is dark, it is dank. You're a Canadian, aren't you? She's your queen as well. She's on all my money. So how do you feel about the queen? I love the queen. I got a lot of time for the queen. She is a down-ass chick. I really like her. I think she's really, really lovely. I think you're having a breakdown. <laughs> See, no, I turned 40 four years ago. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say recently it wasn't, four years ago. I, yes, I've turned, something weird's gone. It's fine though. I'm at ease with it, it's all right. Is everyone you seem else? very happy, yeah, Thanks no, very, very happy. All well, the good. Queen, the Queen knows it all, she can do it all. The Queen sent an email in 1976. David Cameron just got Twitter like a month ago and has yeah. fewer followers than Jodie Marsh. Too right. <laughs> I really, really, really enjoyed the Jubilee. But what? <laughs> I had, I had, um, daily oh. buffers. <laughs> I had dealy boppers, I made cakes, I had bunting, I had a wicker hamper. This is not I the actions of a happy person. <laughs> Come to my party, I've made a cake. Now, Laughter and John. joy and pleasure. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. <laughs> Let's have a look and see if it's up there. <laughs> yes, the Queen celebrated her Diamond Jubilee in 2012. The Queen got silver for her silver jubilee and diamonds for her diamond jubilee. I think we all know what she's getting for our next jubilee, a coffin. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, you've gone too far with that. She is. <laughs> oh, she's she never going to die. She's never going to die. <laughs> Don't say it, Jimmy. Don't say it. <laughs> Beast. <laughs> Sean Steen, what else have the nation been talking about over the last year? Crisis at the BBC. Yes. Crisis at the BBC. Tell me more. Well, we all know that there's been a crisis at the BBC and it's been in crisis for some time. <laughs> and this crisis is a continuing crisis which has affected <laughs> the entire <laughs> BBC. So, I mean, Newsnight were in crisis. Initially, they failed to report on Jimmy Savile and then they reported that Lord McAlpine was a paedophile when he wasn't. Um, Newsnight, George Entwistle, 40, 54 days in the job as Director General. Yeah. He, hadn't even, he hadn't even found the toilets. <laughs> <laughs> 54 days in the job, he got 450... 450. 450, 450 grand. Pounds. For how long? 54, 54 days. days. That's a lot of fucking money, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, for 54 days, that's not bad. Yeah, not not bad. bad going. The BBC had to give Lord McAlpine... Uh, a... £185,000. Yeah, as an apology, they should just introduce a not a paedophile bonus at the BBC. <laughs> Maybe... Kind of like an incentive scheme. Yeah. Look, what I need to know is who, out of all of our beloved 70s icons, children presenters, who was clean? Because everything, <clears throat> even, like, you look at Sutty now, you think we... <laughs> Sue always had two black eyes. No, she didn't. <laughs> Sweet full name was Sweep It Under the Carpet. <laughs> and that rainbow house. <laughs> <laughs> Well, oh, come on. Well, they they, they, they sewed a zip in so that they could shut him up. Because <laughs> <laughs> of what Bungle had done. Well, there's, there's lots of rumours about different presenters, but there's one person I know is not involved in any of it at all. It can't be. It's John Craven, because he's a country file. <laughs> There is an interesting point to be made about how times change, and it's about perspective. And, uh, and in the 70s, there was a thing called wandering hand trouble. Yeah. You go, oh, he's got a case of wandering hand trouble. And it's almost like he had the <laughs> flu or something. <laughs> Just occasionally, he goes... <laughs> <laughs> it's an illness. Basically, Jim will fix it with his way of saying sorry. <laughs> Let's have a look and see if it's up there. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the BBC was rocked in 2012 by revelations that Jimmy Savile was a paedophile and Lord McAlpine 
wasn't. The Savile scandal is obviously terrible, but on the upside, I'm not going to be the worst Jimmy this year. <laughs> Get him. <laughs> Welcome back to 8 Out of 10 Cats. We're trying to guess the most talked about things over the last year. OK, Johnston, what else have the uh, nation been talking about over the last year? Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> it's not a seance, man. <laughs> <laughs> what have the nation been talking about over the last year? <laughs> it just really hurt my head. <laughs> 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 John, what have the nation been talking about over the last year? Uh, well, it can't all be fun, can it? The mm. levers and the. Uh, <gasps> <laughs> what's good is that it cost millions of pounds and took a year, and his conclusion was hey, keep an eye on them. <laughs> <laughs> One of his comments was like a Yoda thing. He said, Who should guard the guardians? Not no one. <laughs> Might as well have commissioned Yoda. Who should look after him? Not no one. <laughs> well, poss possibly someone then. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Waste of money. <laughs> or is he more like a Dalek? He does. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> I like the way we're getting to the heart of the issue <laughs> here. <laughs> 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 he said like this. <laughs> Right. He might as well have come out on the steps and just said, instead of having to go at the press in any way, he should have just said, celebrities, royals, behave yourselves. Yeah. Mm. And that way, he'd have said, we won't even need to report on you. <laughs> None of this would have happened. <laughs> <laughs> What gave you that gas? But I'm sure no. I look forward to reading about it in the papers. No, no, no. It was, it was doing the Dalek. It was doing the Dalek. I'm really sorry. It was going and it brought it brought up something really weird. Is this because you can't do this sort of stuff on British Bake Off? <laughs> you can't during the judging of a cake. You can't go. <laughs> 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 Can I, I'm so sorry. No, no, no problem at all. Okay. Can I just confirm that I will not be pulling your finger at any stage <laughs> during the show? That's okay. That's my favourite thing that's ever happened while I've been on the show. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, one of the recommendations he made was more Gaviscon for celebrities. <laughs> <laughs> It's incredible that he's still... <laughs> Mel's about to make a serious point. There's no way. <laughs> Brace no, yourselves. No way you can... <laughs> what I want to know is, though, it happened to so many people, this hacking business. How... It must be... But it must be quite easy to do. So how do you hack someone's call? How do you do it? It's obviously quite easy. How do you do... How do you do it? My dad used to hack into my calls back in the 1970s by lifting the receiver on the other phone in the house. With his talons. So I'd be... <laughs> <laughs> so I would be in the hall... <laughs> I'd and then fly off of it. <laughs> <laughs> Your dad's a griffin, yes? He's a griffin. A griffin. I'd be... Oh, me. Oh, <laughs> I'd be downstairs on the trim phone in the hall <laughs> and my d I'd be going... Your dad would be on his perch. <laughs> <laughs> receiver and on the beige phone upstairs and say, look, get off the phone now. You've been on it for 60 minutes. You saw your pals at school. Why do you need to speak to them after school? I would go, look, Dad, I'm just having a little chat. That was hacking. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, what the point I'm making is, so many people, loads of ruddy people have been hacked. Yeah. How do you do it? I don't want to do it myself, but how do you do it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> OK, I can tell you it's not one of the most talked about things, but, yes, the Levinson inquiry was all over the papers. After thousands of hours, hundreds of witnesses and millions of pounds, the Levinson inquiry came to one inescapable conclusion. Piers Morgan is a... <laughs> Thank you.
OK, fingers on buzzers. Two more to get. Sean. Is it the Jimmy Carr tax scandal? <laughs> <laughs> On this show, it definitely would be. <laughs> Not generally. Um, it's the, the, the guy who jumps from space. <gasps> oh, Felix Baumgartner. No, amazing thing. He, he, he was on the very, very edge of space and he, he parachuted all the way to... Was it 26 miles? 23 miles, wasn't it? 23. Very impressive. It was it impressive. impressive. It's not the most extreme thing an Austrian's ever done, though, is it? All he did was... <laughs> <laughs> We should take a moment to remember all the animals that they tried with first. <gasps> <laughs> Stop it. You don't just do that, do you? I went outside my house weeks ago and uh, there was a little cat, I thought it had been run over, and I went over, it had a little red pull backpack on. <laughs> a little pair of goggles on it, like that. <laughs> What's one of the interesting things is he is getting married, and I was thinking, imagine the job of organising his stag do. Oh, he uh, said to yes. him, We're going paintballing. <coughs> he goes, Paintballing? <laughs> I want to go to the bloody centre of the earth. <laughs> okay, let's have a look and see if it's up there. <sighs> well done. Yes, Daredevil Felix Baumgartner became the first human to break the sound barrier after free falling from the edge of space. Red Bull backs some incredibly <laughs> dangerous challenges. Their next project will be to sponsor John Terry to ride a float through the Notting Hill Carnival. <laughs> OK, one more thing to get. Fingers on buzzers. John. Royals. A lot of royals. Oh, right. Nudie royals this year, weren't they? Oh, nudie royals? Well, nudie royals is definitely a big thing. It's Kate Middleton. The way they wrote it up in the French paper was like, uh, Kate was offering her breasts to the... To the Provencal sun. Provencal sunshine. <laughs> so what's worse, her being photographed from the street, topless in the south of France, or Harry in a, in a private hotel room in Vegas? Well, what's worse is that he did it playing strip Billiards. I know. <laughs> <laughs> what an arsehole. <laughs> Nobody plays billiards. I like a bit of strip kaplunk, don't get me wrong. <laughs> That's a good guess. Kind of all or nothing. Strip mousetrap is the crazy one. Yeah. <laughs> strip test cricket. <laughs> <laughs> Five days just to get the vest off. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I think the royal nudies should be celebrated. I think they should bring out some commemorative stamps. <laughs> Norks, Nadgers, Nips and Nunus. <laughs> and you, you can collect the whole set. <laughs> if you've got royal ginger royal nuts, set. though, you go, I'm not licking that. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you make of the, the royals? Do you like them? I've seen them in a pub. Where do you, where do, you do? <laughs> <laughs> It was Harry and, uh, and William. And we're just having a pleasant drink, and you could see them, and I was like, it's the royal family. Were they then... roped off in any way? No, no, just... they were just they were surrounded by a couple of bodyguards and a few a few young people having a nice time. And then I just said, Watch me do the crab. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then Prince William, on my mother's life, may God strike me down now, just bust into the crab. They need bodyguards all the time. Prince Harry's like a toddler, isn't he? He's like playing soldiers, and then you turn around, he's got no pants on, running around. Like, oh, look, he thinks he's a Nazi. Get the camera, he'll sleep tonight. He's <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's have a look if Royal Nudes is up there. Yowzers. Yes, the Royals were photographed in several compromising positions in 2012. Naked photos of Prince Harry were published following his trip to Vegas. You know what they say, what happens in Vegas stays in pages 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 of The Sun. <laughs> so, those were the most talked about things over the past year. But in other news, in May, Andy Murray won his first Grand Slam. The Scots haven't celebrated that hard since discovering you could get drunk on hand sanitizer. <laughs> And I hit the headlines in June. When I got the message the papers had been calling, I jumped into action, started hitting my laptop with a hammer and digging up the patio. And then I found out it was something about tax. <laughs> <laughs> so, at the end of that round, Sean, Catherine and Stephen have three points, John, Mel and Mickey have two points. <laughs> That's it for part two. See you after the break.
Welcome back to 8 out of 10 cats. Our next round is pick of the polls. Sean, Catherine and Stephen, your turn first. What do you like the look of? Well, I think we have to pick the picture of Stephen oh. here. OK. So that's you playing uh, Al Capone there in Boardwalk Empire. How did you get the part? Because there are actors in Chicago. I know, it's, it's <laughs> weird, to be honest with you. I've done a film a few years ago called... Um, Gangs of New York. Gangs of New York, yeah, with Martin Scorsese. And he said, I'll work with you again one day. So I, I was like, you know, you can't say that to me and not do it. And one day I was in the house, me and the missus just having a cup of tea and the phone went. And I was like, hello, and he went, how are you doing, kid? And I was like, yeah, yeah I'm OK, I'm OK. Uh, well, are you working? I went, no, no, I'm not busy at the minute. OK, I'm going to play Al Capone. I went, OK, what? He went, yeah, 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 I was, I'll see, you want to do it? And I was like, yeah, OK, he said, I'll see you in a few weeks. And I went, and the missus went, what the fuck was that? Yeah. <laughs> and I went, it's incredible. I think he wants me to play Al Capone. <gasps> He's one of, it's one of, I mean, he's such a, you know, it's, a, it's such a tough guy character. Here's your related uh, question. Most women are more attracted to a geek than a tough guy, true or false? <gasps> what do you think, Catherine? I think we want the same thing men want. It's like a lady in the streets and a freak in the sheets. I want, like, a sister <laughs> Sorry, what was that that we want? A, la a lady in the streets? You don't even know what you want. Men. <laughs> <laughs> men want, no, I think you've just nailed exactly what I want. I'm going to write it down. <laughs> <laughs> a lady in the streets and a freak in the sheets. Yes. I want the opposite. Really? I want someone that will go straight off to sleep and then be mental in the street. I want them now. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, because men sort of want a, a woman who can cook and clean and look after the children. That's it, really. <laughs> Read the question, it's tough, yeah. guy. And here's why I think, right? Because yeah. if you are nice all the time, then the lady will notice when you are not nice. So if you bring a lady flowers every day and then one day you forget, she'll be like, where's my friggin' flowers? Yeah. If you're an <laughs> arsehole, then all you've got to do is not be an arsehole for a, for a day. day. And she's like, oh, Steve's really trying. <laughs> I don't think he's stolen from my purse this week. <laughs> Every now and then, I, I forget to take down an Abbey for my wife, just to <laughs> let her know he's in charge. <laughs> <laughs> I think the most important thing a woman wants in a man, you know, is, is where he puts towels. That seems to be an obsession. <laughs> so you guys know about the towel thing. But I don't understand it. I don't understand why that's a particular... Every single woman I know, every single relationship I know about, that's an issue. Why a towel can cause so much pain and misery. It's a sign... Oh, now I've, now I've become the woman in this relationship. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean It's now? not about the towel, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> oh. what the towel represents. Do you know what it says to me, Sean? You've got out of the shower and you thought, yeah, I'll let John get that towel. You're doing in this... my bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Picking your towels up, that's what I'm doing, young man. <laughs> but no, the towel is just a, it's a very visible, wet, stinking gesture that says, <laughs> don't care where that goes. No, but the towel... not, John, I'm not talking about leaving towels. No, I, I'm in a totally different level. I'm there, they're not on the, the, in the right place. You just hang them up somewhere, but oh. like a door. Just hang it over a door, yeah. like that. Like a little flag, like a symbol. I'm, I'm not... Sean's in I'm... that room, probably. Mm. Yeah. Well, he's been in there recently. <laughs> I've made it. <laughs> it's worse, though, hanging it on a door, cos that says, I understand the process of hanging this up. I just choose to put it somewhere it's going to piss you off. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's, get, let's get back to tough guys versus geeks. Let's take a look at uh, an example of a tough guy, an example of a geek. OK, so we've got there Jason Statham, tough guy, Ugh. and Brian Cox, who's kind of the geek's geek. Oh, gimme Cox, definitely. Yeah, but say... <laughs> <laughs> Let's get some answers on this. So, most women are more attracted to a geek than a tough guy. True or false? What are you going to go for? I don't know. You, you, you're a lady. You decide. I think a good woman is attracted to a geek. I think most women are attracted to a tough guy. So, you're going Ooh, false? You're saying most, most women are attracted to a tough false. guy? What, what are you going to go for, John? No, I, I think young women are attracted to tough men, but the minute they grow up a little bit and realise the mortgage has got to be paid, yeah. and, <laughs> you know, the kids have got to be walked and all that, they come round the and they go... The kids have got to be walked? <laughs> You know, like their pets. Yeah. <laughs> Tried sending him out on his own and he stops at the end of the path. And I go, go on. <laughs> and he goes, I'm only six, and I go. <laughs> and he goes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, 
I would say that most women go for the geeky guy eventually. I think you're right, Mickey. John, what do you think? I don't care what you think, because I'm a tough guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's false. OK, I can tell you the answer is false. 56% of women are more attractive to tough guys. John, Steve, uh, what do you like the look of? John, John, John. Cake. 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 We would like the three differently toned cakes. OK, um, here's a clip from the Great British Bake Off to illustrate your question. Oh, hello. It is your it is. strudel it's dough yep. made with um, plain flour, Made with flour. plain flour, much easier to roll out. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> hang on. Is that needed? Is that what you is do? That, no, that's not what I've been doing. It's the speed that stretches it quick, is it? It's decent dough. Just say what, you're grabbing it and twisting it. Grab and twist, Just mate. grab and twist and flick. Yeah, try it. Grab and twist and then slap right and toss. Right over here. <laughs> <laughs> Hold it by the end and flick it. This is horrible. No, no, that looks really good so far that you can... <laughs> It's got green carpet in it. I'm not serving Mary Berry green carpet. <laughs> uh, here's your related question. Right. Most people think cookery shows make it look too easy. True or false? False. False, Jimmy. Move on. False. Three. Look, I'll tell you this, OK? In GBB30... No, GBB... O, GBBO3, Great British Bake Off 3, that's what we say. Quicker, just to say nose. it, I think, if you don't. <laughs> John, who did really, really well and actually won GBBO3, he made the Colosseum, the Collar Ruddy Seam, out of gingerbread. <laughs> have, you, have you tried to cook food yes. in the real world? Yes. Let's talk it through. OK. First of all, you've got to go and buy it. <laughs> yeah. Then you've got to cut it up. <laughs> then you've got to cook it. Yeah. How is that easy? <laughs> and what part, what part of that? And then you've got to apologise no, to the people you served in. <laughs> you know, you, you look in the cupboard and you think, I don't have any of this shit in this book. Because <laughs> I've got other stuff to get on with, you know. Oh, some capsicum seeds. What? <laughs> <laughs> Where? When? Most people in that cupboard have got a, a tin of fish or something, <laughs> a tin of baked beans that have been sold to you, they were multi-pack only, but you let it slide. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just chaotic. <laughs> you know, and you ain't got the pan that you need, you're trying to get the fish, you're cutting its head off, and then you're eating it with an hammer, <laughs> you know, and you get the broccoli, and you, you, you're not allowed to sweep people's faces with it, because they don't like <laughs> it. All the time, what is in the hallway? A takeaway menu. <laughs> 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 so good. Um, the Great British Bake Off is obviously it's an incredibly popular show, and apparently baking has become much more popular as a result of it. Yeah. I watched it all. Here's my favourite ever clip. Okay. Let's be yeah. honest with you. Your name will ring forever. So let's start with Mary. <laughs> Sorry, can we turn our way from there? It feels a bit disconcerting. It's, it's, it's amazing. How... Do, I mean, how... How? <laughs> that squirrel is a worldwide internet sensation now. Is the it? nuts. Yeah. Those nuts have been tweeted worldwide. Yeah. I wish I had a furry penis. <laughs> <laughs> because when I, whenever I felt the urge, very rarely, just, just, just sort of put my hand down there. <laughs> but now it's even furry. <laughs> <laughs> you can just go... Oh, and people say, you yeah, could do it on a train, for example. <laughs> if, you, if I put my hand down my trousers on a train, what are you doing? You go, but if you said, no, look, it's furry... <laughs> <laughs> you go, oh, it's lovely, that. It's <laughs> furry. And offering it to other people would be less sinister. <laughs> so, would you like to stroke this? <laughs> It's yeah. John, you do, you do cookery shows in your home? Yeah, sometimes, a little bit, on my own. Um, that's the problem I have. I don't mind the cookery show, the cooking is fine. It's that bit at the end. What they make look easy is suddenly having loads of cool mates who turn up 
<laughs> Jamie Oliver never finishes a flan without the doorbell going, oh, it's my mates who are in a band. We're just riding our mopeds down to the Grand Canyon where we're going to have a picnic. <laughs> Think, I can finish a meal and just go, oh, there's nobody else here to see this. <laughs> what a waste of four hours of my pissing life that was. <laughs> Nigella's even worse. She comes down in the middle of the night and goes, hey, they're all upstairs, but I'm just eating flan at three o'clock in the morning, but I'm still thin, even though I eat cake at midnight. But if you do that, you'll actually die, you fat bastard. <laughs> <laughs> So most people think cookery shows make it look too easy, true or false. What are you going to go for, Sean? True. You're going to go true? What, what do you think, John? We think it's true. You think it's true? I OK, I can true. tell you the answer is true. 72% of people think cookery shows do make it look too easy. <laughs> I have to admit, I've got a knack for cooking. A knack. She's from Hungary and she's an excellent cook. <laughs> So at the end of that round, it's five points for Sean's team and four points for John's team. Aww. And the winner is, is the name of our final round. Here is your question. Worst thing to have tattooed on your body? Is it the time? <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you got any tattoos? Absolutely not. No, are you, would you be tempted? I think the worst thing to have tattooed on your body is ink. No way. <laughs> I'm thinking of having one done. Oh, well, you should definitely do it. Definitely do it. <laughs> and go with the first thought you have. <laughs> what would you get? What I want a under the wedding ring. Under the wedding ring? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I think there's something quite romantic about that. Because there's a lot of pain involved in having it done there, apparently. Tattoos on fingers. Very painful. I saw this guy and he had, uh, he had the names of various girls he'd been out with on his arm and crossed out. So, you know, like, you know, to the latest one. And I thought, you remember at school when you used to learn about Henry VIII and his wives? Yeah. And it would say, you know, Catherine of Aragon divorced, Anne Boleyn beheaded, <laughs> da -da -da, divorced, Di divorced, divorced, divorced. beheaded and died, divorced, beheaded, <laughs> survived. Yes. Is that di divorced, beheaded and <laughs> died? <laughs> it's quite good if you did that with your current girlfriend, the girlfriends of your life. You know, you did that, so you'd have, like, you know, the first one was, you know, she emigrated to Australia, <laughs> injunction, <laughs> restraining order, then it would be Derek, uh, I was drunk. <laughs> Come on, now, let's have a look at some tattoos. So, uh, very famously tattooed is uh, David Beckham. <laughs> well, the mighty Wookiee Chewbacca seems to know. <laughs> <laughs> the sleeve ones are rank, this thing that's caught on for having a whole sleeve, cos it'll spread to, like, there'll be trouser leg, yeah. When I was growing up in the East End, you met the odd man who had a, a cobweb across his face. Yes. That's commitment. That that's means that, you know, Do if you I don't get that part in Spider-Man, I am in trouble. <laughs> I'm never sure about that, whether that should be intimidating or they're just really scared of flies. <laughs> <laughs> So it's uh, someone from your past? Your ex partner. That's the right answer. <laughs> yes, the worst thing to have tattooed on your body is your ex's name. If you're a parent and you're worried your child might get a tattoo, I've got a bit of advice for you. Bring them up better. <laughs> Well, that sound tells me it's the end of the round and the end of the show, which means the final scores are John, Mel and Mickey have four points, Sean, Catherine and Stephen are tonight's winners with six points. Yeah. Thanks to all our panellists, our wonderful studio audience, and to all of you for watching at home. That's it from us. Good night. <laughs>